Doctor, one of the things you've studied is the use of dietary fats over the last century, 100 plus years. Just talk a little bit about what you've learned in that area. Sure. The, you know, with fats, we've, we've sort of taken a full revolution, so to speak, where they were in favor, out of favor, and now they're, uh, everybody's talking about them. Mm. If you look at paleo diet, zone diet. Um, and see what, if you look at our grandparents and our great grandparents, uh, they use lard in their cooking, right. they use butter to cook with, they, they use their baking grease. And as we started to become more and more industrialized, we started to come more and more away from that. And canned foods and TV dinners started to become more and more popular. And we started to lost our way a little bit when it came to eating real food. And there were some historical things that happened over the last, uh, you know, in the 20th century that were significant when it came to food management, commercial food. And actually a lot of it developed out of the Great Depression, interestingly enough because uh, the government w had a predicament. They needed income and they needed jobs. And so they began to become very protectionist and putting taxes on things like coconut oil. And so it became very expensive for retailers, merchandisers to carry it on their shelves. And at the same time, they were subsidizing the soybean industry. And so they, they were creating jobs and creating income. And that created a sort of a perfect storm where it was just cost effective to start carrying more things like soybean oil, base products, corn oil, safflower oil, sun, sunflower seed oil. Mm -hmm. And so as you progress through the 20th century, those industries had all the money in the world for lobbying power. Uh, and if you also look at fat regulation, fat research during, during that time in the 1960s, you had the landmark study with Ansel Keys and the seven countries study where mm -hmm. he <clears throat> began linking the use of saturated fats uh, with heart disease. And so the whole diet-heart hypothesis really took hold uh, in the 60s. And by the 70s and 80s, uh, that meant the lobbying money of the soybean industry and the vegetable oil industry. And so you really saw saturated fats disappear from, from use. Mm -hmm. And different organizations started to pick up on that. For instance, uh, 19, well, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but in the 1980s, you had statins uh, were first right. developed. And so there was another push against saturated fats and cholesterol. And uh, so it started influencing dietary recommendations as they came out in the 80s and 90s. Uh, most notably, 92 was the food pyramid, uh, which had fats used sparingly mm -hmm. and uh, grains on top. And so it's interesting when you look at the economic history. Uh, in fact, um, Coconut oil in specific, because you know, it's mostly saturated fat, and uh, you know, historically, uh, people know about it being pulled from the movie theater popcorn, and uh, really it was this vilification of fats over the years, this combination, perfect storm, if you will, that really took a century to pull ourselves out of that and to revisit some of that old research, um, you know, not just saturated fats, but trans fats, and. Uh, really, it's this commercialization of food, and we're kind of coming back to our roots mm -hmm. with it. So um, fats have taken a full revolution. It's, it's been really interesting to follow it over the course of the year because um, the, the historical discussion almost speaks more volumes than, than the science itself, yeah. uh, but the, obviously the science is still there.